We all love designing and building with timber, whether it's for domestic, commercial or landscaping purposes. We also know the good news stories about wood. It's sustainable, it helps tackle climate change, it even makes us feel good with its biophilic effects. But when you choose or specify to use wood, the question of durability arises. Just how long is the service life of the timber you're using? Is it fit for purpose? Let's look at some of the factors behind choosing the appropriate timber for the right job. Wood, by its very nature, decays. Some species of timber decay faster than others, while the environment in which it's being used for is also a factor. There's moisture and fungus, and of course hungry termites to worry about. But all this shouldn't put us off when choosing timber as a material to build with. It's just about choosing the timber that's fit for purpose. We have some amazingly durable timbers, but we also have a lot of timbers that require protection, otherwise they'll be attacked by fungi and insects and if you put them in marine environments, by marine bulbs. And so it's important that we treat these timbers to kind of extend their life because that makes them more environmentally sound in terms of using timber. This testing takes place at the National Centre for Timber Durability and Design. Established and partly funded by Forest and Wood Products Australia, its aim is to identify and manage the factors that degrade wood and wood products when in use. Humans have been trying to protect timber for centuries, right? They used to, like the Phoenicians used to smear things on the, on the boats to keep them out lasting longer. People dip things and we used all kinds of chemicals unsuccessfully. And it wasn't until about the 1830s that people actually started to figure out how to, how to protect wood. And the first thing they made was creosote. And they actually then took that and figured out a way to get it in the wood. And that was all done for the British Navy. And, and we still use creosote today because it's a, it's a highly effective preservative. And our processes aren't that different from what, we use, what people used in the 1830s. They've just become more controlled and, and they're really important in terms of extending the service life of timber. This is one of the many methods used. It's in-ground field trials intentionally located in ultra-severe environments to accelerate timber breakdown and test new treatments. These have been out for about two and a half years and you pick up the timber and you just, you poke at it. And so these are examples, you can see there's quite a lot of decay here. And so I would take the material with my little pointy stick and I would poke around and I would estimate the percentage of area that's damaged by the, by the decay fungus. And I can do this for all these timbers. It's at a timber treatment plant such as this where untreated wood comes in, goes through its various treatment processes and leaves ready to tackle anything nature can throw at it. We have a pretty broad base of local producers, wholesalers, importers, uh, landscape timbers, as well as structural timber products. It's really diverse, so hence over time we've gone from one treatment plant to four plants and we're offering I think about eight different hazard classes and types of treatment. A pack of timber is rectangular or, or square. And the advantage of using a square vessel is that you don't use as much liquid. Whereas if you've got a, had a round vessel, then you'd have to have a lot more liquid to fill the void space in there. The process is the various combinations of vacuum and pressure. It's targeted to the product that you're being used. In Australia, timber is treated to six different hazard classes. These range from using timber in dry indoor conditions right through to the marine environment. The Timber Preservers Association of Australia represents the country's preserving industry and says it's easy to choose the timber you need by interpreting a set of numbers branded on each product. The information that you need to decide the right product for the right job is actually pretty easy to find, Jack. It's actually written on all the products. Um, tell us about this brand. Okay, uh, this is on our technical note number one on the website. The 488 tells me the treatment plant. The 75 tells me the active ingredient that it's been treated with. Yep. And the H2F tells me it's protected against termites and is for framing. South, that means south of the uh, Tropic of Capricorn. Now the 75, there are 11 active ingredients currently approved for use in Australia. Yeah. And they're expensive to analyze for every one. Right. So that's why it, that tells me what to analyze for. Okay, so we know, so that tells us what's in it, that tells us where it's from, and that tells us what you can use it for. It's all pretty simple. In terms of method, the idea of wood preservation is to get the preservative into the wood. So you've got a 
basically, very broadly, two techniques. You've got, you've either get, pull a vacuum on the wood and the, uh, and then flood it with preservative and the preservative gets sucked into the wood or you heat the wood and the heating drives the air from the wood and the, when you cool it down, it sucks the preservative in. There are different solvents. There are water-based preservatives and there are organic solvent-based preservatives and each different carrier, each different solvent determines the method used to do the treatment. Treated timber is perfectly safe to touch as part of the construction process because the active ingredients have been fixed into the wood. I'm a chemist by training, and so as far as I'm concerned, there's no such thing as a bad chemical. It's all about dose. Now, you want to stop fungi or rot, and you want to stop termites and, and other insects. So you're going to have to kill them, all right? So we're using low levels of insecticide, low levels of fungicide, to stop them from eating the wood. The, the buying public or the specifiers must rely on the fact that there is oversight of this product. They, it would not be approved if it was dangerous. It would not be approved. And the currently approved chemicals are under review all the time. And it's not just Australian timber that comes to places like this to get treated. This is LVL from Finland awaiting its turn to be treated for Australia's harsh conditions. There's a set of Australian standards which ensure the chemicals being used are safe once the wood is treated, and although the industry is well established and good at what it does, more research is always being done to see if there's a better way. So what we're doing here is I'm going to spray the wood with an indicator which tells us where the chemical is in the wood, and this is called chromazurol. It reacts with copper, and in CCA we have copper, chrome, and arsenic, so if the chemical is there, it'll turn blue. And we have two pieces of timber here, one that's very well treated, it turned entirely blue across the cross section. The other one turned blue except at the center, which is where the heartwood is. And the heartwood is very difficult to treat. And so in this case, we can see where it didn't really react very well. This is part of the quality control process with timber. We take samples, we cut them up, and we spray them to see if the chemical is, is across the cross section. And then we can take that piece and cut out pieces to assay it chemically so we can make sure that the chemical is where we want it at the right level for the particular hazard class we're using. To find out more about which timber is right for your job, visit the Timber Preservers Association of Australia's website. There you will find easy to understand fact sheets and information.